Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, we have talked uh, before several times about the intricacies and complexities of the forthcoming general election in Scotland, particularly the splitting of the SNP, or well, at least the splitting of the nationalist vote, because you now have Alaba and you also have the Greens announcing they are going to stand in even more constituencies. These two parties, smaller nationalist parties, will trickle away some votes for the nationalists, for particularly the SNP. That will undoubtedly strengthen the hand of Labour, but it should, at that point, it would have also helped the Tories a little bit. Uh, there's a couple of seats where the Tories are in second place and very small margins in it, uh, and where that splitting of the nationalist vote will allow the Tories to step in. They may do badly in England, but they could well do quite well in Scotland. And that was all very fine and pleasant, of course, until the cat has been let out of the bag and thrown among the pigeons, if I may mix my metaphors. Because Richard Tice and the Reform UK have admitted they are going to stand in every single Scottish constituency. And they will appeal to natural Tory voters. Oh, how complex is this going to get? This is going to change everything. Let's have a look. So Richard Tice's Reform UK claim it will stand in every Scottish seat at the general election. And that says Nigel Farage is yet to confirm his political return. I suspect he will. I think he will. Once it's announced, I think uh, Farage will step up. I think if any, if any time he's ever going to do it in his career, this will be it. The Tories are at their absolute weakest. There's a lot of disaffected Tories who will turn to uh, Reform UK. I don't know if Reform UK will get any seats, but they will certainly split the Tory vote, uh, definitely in England. That will allow a massive majority for Labour in England, um, but it will also uh, create massive headaches for Rishi Sunak. He's gone. I mean, at the end of the day, Rishi Sunak is gone. Uh, we're going, you know, because he cannot fail to, he cannot, he cannot face the defeat he's he's going to face and remain. The only the only question for the Tories now is, do they get rid of him before the election or after? It's a very very difficult question uh, because he's now the accepted leader, and then he's going to announce it and do the run up, or do they say, right, we'll go in October, we'll get rid of him now, go in October, and give, let's say, for example, Penny Morden. Uh, a run in to get there to change things to change the sort of the outlook of the Tory party it may not change their uh, their fortunes they may still lose they're almost definitely going to lose but it may reduce that loss that's all the Tories got the best scenario for the Tories across the whole of the UK is to reduce the losses they are incapable of winning Scotland is going to be very very different because the whole makeup of the political uh, spectrum is so much different because you're not only riven through party lines the Labour, Lib Dems, Tories, uh, SNP, Greens you're also riven through unionism and separatism. Now we've already talked as I say about the fact that um, you're going to have Alba and the Greens giving an option for people who are let's say they, they are nationalists, they are separatists, but they're uncomfortable with the SNP. And up until now, of course, the SNP is really all you've had. But with these other parties, they now have a home that they can vote for these other parties that aren't the SNP. And so they can still vote for nationalism, but not uh, go down and put it into the little yellow box. They have other boxes in which they can select. And I think that will give them um, they'll give the smaller parties a boost, but it will be hugely damaging, of course, for the SNP. Um, and that, of course, would then give, in Scotland particularly, the Labour Party the momentum, that impetus to, to step into the void. Nature pours a vacuum. It would be filled by Labour. And prior to, as I say, the, uh, the Reform Party going and announcing this in Scotland, there would be a little bit of a boost for the Tories uh, and possibly the Lib Dems may, may gain just a seat or two. Tories may gain a seat or two, but there'd still be, you know, quite a strong 
base there. And it would be ultimately the uh, the SNP that would suffer the most at the general election, which is good, which is what we actually want to happen. The problem you have now is, of course, Reform UK are saying they're standing in all these Scottish seats. If they stand in strong conservative areas, those strong conservative areas could let Labour in. Or worse, the SNP. The Tories need to come to an immediate, an immediate deal with reform in that they need to say, don't stand in strong conservative areas and we will not put up opposition in very, very weak conservative areas and make a deal with the devil, basically. Otherwise, you're going to end up with the possibility of the SNP snatching back a couple of Tory seats, the last thing you want. But this really does spice up this absolute um, election. You, you see, if you go down the separatist, like we've done the separatist line, you've now got separatists that can vote for a separatist party without it being the SNP. But on the other side, you've got people who are pro-Brexit, now have an alternative pro-Brexit party in reform. Previously, they could only vote Tory. So they may be pro-Brexit, but not really Tory. We found that with a lot of Labour supporters, particularly. Then you also have people who are natural Tories, but who are fed up with the Tory party and all its shenanigans um, and their inability to get hold of various problems. And they're seeing reform. And so you've got natural Tories going to reform. You've got Labour voters who want to vote Brexit, but don't want to vote Tories going to reform. It's so complex now. It's, it really is. It's all Venn diagrams and what ifs and looping back. And, you know, a tiny change here can create a big change here. The chaos theory coming in. I tell you what, John Curtis, Professor John Curtis, he's going to have to really earn his money if he wants to call Scotland at the next election, isn't he? It's going to be far more complex, I think, than anyone ever imagined. So I'm not really going to go into the story. The story is only him just saying that... Um, you know, he's, he's going to stand. Um, but the only the only trouble I think, and this is the problem, the only problem I think with it is you split that Tory vote in too many places. Labour get those seats. They snatch seats, which should have gone to Tories, but Labour will get them. The, the Labour majority will be huge, 200 majority, easily. And if you get that, then the whole of Britain, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, as well as England, are going to suffer. And they're going to suffer from a terrible, terrible affliction called Starmageddon. Because it will be the end of everything. But it'll be the end of Starmer as well. Because I, 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 I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I have a feeling that he will get in, become the next Prime Minister. And then within weeks or possibly months, the first uh, congre um, conference after becoming Prime Minister, there'll be a challenge to his leadership and you'll get someone from the far left in. Angela Rayner, probably. And can you imagine a country where Angela Rayner is the Prime Minister? A woman who left school, unable to read and write as your Prime Minister. It doesn't bear thinking about. Incidentally, I'll also suggest that um, with a massive defeat on his hands, Hamza Yousaf will resign, I think. Um, even he knows if he gets wiped out and goes into, say, single-figure seats, he'll have to go. Who's going to take over? Kate Forbes? Probably. But who will be the establishment's choice? Because the establishment don't really like Kate Forbes. They know. They're, they're scared of her because they know that the masses, the people, the members love her. But after all, they, she was their choice, really. Um, it was only the establishment that kind of forced Hamza Yousaf through. Once he's gone, who have they got? Angus? Please, God, no. He's Mr. Yesterday, isn't he? He's gone. His boat has sailed. Uh, Mary McCallan? The Saturday girl, if you really want a 30 year old who's never had a real job leading a party, leading a country for a couple of years. It's a bad way, isn't it? Otherwise, you're going to have some old wanker. Who is it going to be? Matheson? No, can't be. They're all tainted. This is the trouble. They're all 
Take the Fergus, get Fergus Ewing in. He <laughs> Jesus. The he, no. <laughs> they won't go with Fergus, will they? But who have you got? Literally, there are so few that you could pick from. But that's what it is. So Richard Tice has really, really screwed everything up by doing this. You don't know what's going to happen now. It's chaos. Well done, Richard. I do like a bit of chaos. It creates wonderful, wonderful opportunities. Uh, anyway, I shall end there and I shall come up and we'll round the video off. But it's just, um, it's going to be interesting. As soon as they call that election, we know the date. All oh, hell will break loose. Anyway. I'll be here to watch it, and I hope so will you. Anyway, we'll come up now, round off the video. Thank you. There's an old Chinese proverb which says it is a curse to live in interesting times. But I don't know. I find this massively interesting. It's chaotic. It's uh, unfathomable. And I don't think anyone will be in any way sure of themselves should they make predictions um, the likes of Curtis and all these punsters and pollsters, they'll all go, mm, yeah, well, if, that, and when, because it is going to be chaotic. Um, whenever the election is called, be it May or October, whenever, and um, you start getting all the opinion polls coming in, and, well, but really from now when the opinion polls coming in, because they know that the um, reform are going to have to be part of the, uh, the mix now, it, nobody will be sure. It's... There's going to be faces gone. Well-known faces will have gone. And well-known faces will never be seen again. Uh, there'll be a whole load of new faces. Um, you know, I, I do think Hamza will go. I think Rishi Sunak's gone. Um, who's going to be the new leaders? Who knows? Who cares? Long way away. But come election night, I and I'm sure many of you good people will be sitting there riveted to our TV screens at 10 o'clock watching the results as they come in, got your snacks, a couple of beers, something nice, and then just waiting for the Scottish results particularly. We know England is just going to go massively red. There'll be your blue spots, but it's going to be a massive wall of red in England. But Scotland, that's where the interest is. If you're, a, if you're, if you're into all the, 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 the internet side fighting and all the deals and all the oh awfulness, Scotland's the place to be watching on election night, isn't it? I wonder. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please subscribe to the channel. Do please press a like. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will speak to you later. Bye.